Hello, I'm Natasha Gutierrez. I'm sitting here today with Marcus Broccoli of North Face Media. North Face Media has just invested in Rappler and we will speak to Marcus about what that means for Rappler and for North Face Media. Hi Marcus, thank you for Natasha. joining us. Great to be here. Let's start from the very beginning. Tell us first off about North Face Media and how you got into it. North Face Media is a small investment company that was set up by a couple of friends of mine, Sasha Vucinich, who was the original founder of the Media Development Loan Fund, which was a company that had provided capital through loans to media in post-communist Eastern and Central Europe. And Stuart Carl, who was previously the chief operating officer at Reuters, and before that had worked for a long time as general counsel of the Wall Street Journal and Dow Jones. And, and I, we together decided that there was a great opportunity to support independent media in growth markets around the world and to look for technologies that also support media, not only in growth markets, but in other, in other markets. Um, our feeling is that we are on the precipice of a lot of powerful change in world media markets, that there is still great opportunity to build strong, viable, independent media businesses in many countries. And we wanted to help those people who are starting those companies to succeed. That said, why Rappler? Rappler is a perfect alignment of our interests and the goals of the founders. Um, Rappler is a company that is dedicated, as Maria Ressa likes to say, to redefining journalism, keeping the soul and the spirit of journalism, but adapting to the technology changes that have swept our world, finding new ways of delivering journalism to audiences, engaging with audiences from the ground up as well as top down. And we're big believers that independent media should connect with audiences in new ways, that technologies are fundamentally transforming the way that journalism should be practiced. Maria and her team understood that. I've known Maria for many years. When Maria and I first started talking about this, it was probably a year ago. And we had just launched North Base Media. Rappler was already well underway. And it couldn't have been a more perfect fit for what we were trying to do. What does the investment mean? The investment is really a partnership. Okay. I think the, the way to think of this is we bring to Rappler our experience and whatever counsel or advice the team at Rappler might want from us. You know, I, I have had the honor of running a couple of big newsrooms, the Washington Post and the Wall Street Journal. My partners, Sasu Vucinich, was a founder of a couple of news startups in, in Central Europe and then went on to run the Media Development Loan Fund for many years. Mm. Stuart Carl, who's an, another partner, was general counsel of the Wall Street Journal, one of the best media lawyers in the world, and went on to become chief operating officer at Reuters. So we're making ourselves available. We'll offer whatever advice Rappler might want. Mm -hmm. And in, in exchange, you know, what, what we want is we want to be able to take many of the ideas and the pioneering concepts that Rappler is working with in the Philippines and mm -hmm. deploy them in other markets. Because I think Rappler is one of the most innovative, if not the most innovative, digital media companies we have seen in any growth market around the world. That's interesting. Because I think there were discussions on whether this model of Rappler only works in specific places. We're in a really interesting, chain, fast changing world for mm -hmm. media. And the audiences for news are in many cases audiences who've never before consumed media. They're consuming news over smartphones. So if you have a really great media product that's clear and smart and independent and authentic, and I think this is something that really bears underscoring, people in digital media, readers of digital media, consumers of digital media are acutely conscious of what is authentic and real, and they know the difference between that and that which is provided by the state or by oligarch controlled media, which in many countries has been the dominant media. So when you have something like Rappler, which is really the combination of great journalism, you know, a great team of journalists from the top down at Rappler, people who have vast experience in journalism, but also content that's being shaped by the readers of Rappler, mm -hmm. content that's being driven by the needs, the civic interests of the readers of Rappler, put that combination together, it's very powerful, and it can work in any market. The technologies that Rappler uses, you know, the way it serves up advertising and uses social media to find communities for their advertisers, mm -hmm. that'll work anywhere in the world. Have you seen trends emerge that work across the board? 
I think there are a lot of trends in media that bear watching right now. Okay. Um, one, for example, is the notion that a media company needs to provide a plaza, a place for its audience to come together, to interact, mm. to engage with content, but all under the umbrella of a media company. So in effect, you create the place for your readers to spend their time and create content and communicate with each other. Um, I think you're seeing much tighter integration of technology platforms and, um, and the content so that when people produce content, it's being tailored for a certain kind of delivery, whether it's on social media or you know, directly on, on different phone or mobile applications. Um, I think the, there is a great emphasis right now on personalization. Every media company is grappling with this question of how do you mm. provide people with the news they're most likely to want based on their previous behavior. Um, Aggregation is something that I see a lot of right now, media companies trying to deliver content that may not be what they've created themselves, but they know their readers will be interested in that come from other places, you know, the Huffington Post model or mm -hmm. the Business Insider model, you might say. Um, all these things are sort of blending together. There's another interesting phenomenon happening right now in, in media, in journalism media, which is there's a blurring of, of, of approaches. So. What, what previously might have seemed like different products, people are kind of blurring together. To give you a specific example, mm -hmm. you know, if you look at BuzzFeed, which is a really powerful, engaging, lively, dynamic stream of content, it's probably, and you know, Ben Smith, the editor of BuzzFeed might dispute this, but it's probably like 90% stuff that has nothing to do with journalism. And it's not the same thing as the New York Times. But what you're seeing is you're seeing every media company looking at what every other media company is doing mm -hmm. and asking, well, should we be adapting some of what they're doing? Or they're adapting some of what they're doing, adapting mm -hmm. and adapting some of mm -hmm. what they're doing. And that's a phenomenon I think that's worth watching. Because back then, it was not that easy, obviously, to start media companies. And now that it's easier, does that compromise certain journalistic values, for instance? I don't think how easy it is or how hard it is to start a media company has anything to do with your credibility. I think credibility is something you earn. Like, let's take Rappler. Rappler has a lot of credibility. I don't think anybody doubts the seriousness of the journalism that's practiced at Rappler mm -hmm. or the commitment of the people who run Rappler to produce high quality, independent, smart, accountability journalism. Rappler hasn't been around a long time, but by pursuing with really great clarity of focus, those objectives, Rappler has credibility. Um, you know, credibility is probably the most important coin of the realm in traditional journalism. And if you don't have credibility, if you're trying to be a serious journalism outfit, mm -hmm. it's really hard to make a living. And so, you know, we look as as a investors, as funders of media companies, as advisors to media companies, we look for those people who understand, even as they're starting media companies up, that the real value of their media company will come from the quality of their journalism and their commitment to independent, strong, authentic, accountability journalism. Okay, clearly you believe in what Rappler is doing, but what do you think is the biggest challenge for Rappler moving forward? Rappler has grown very fast mm -hmm. and maintaining that growth, um, reaching audiences across the Philippines. Uh, Rappler, as you know, is extended into Indonesia a bit. It's tiptoeing into the regional market. And there may well be um, opportunities for Rappler to become a, a much bigger voice uh, for a much bigger platform for voices across the region. Because I think the way I think of Rappler is the way I think indeed of, of a lot of digital media companies is they are increasingly venues for people to express their own voices. I mean, they have to be a reflection of the communities they're serving. They can't be, again, top down. They have to be a mix of information that's relevant and important. Mm -hmm. and and filtered, but also information that is produced by and shaped by the readers and consumers of that information. What is the single biggest change you've seen in the industry? Technology has profoundly disrupted the media industry. And, you know, there's two ways of looking at it. It's distressing to <laughs> have your, you know, extremely profitable, well-established, institutional business suddenly having to 
struggle and fight for advertising dollars, for readers, for content. Mm. Um, but on the other hand, it's exhilarating. I mean, I don't think there's ever been a more interesting time in media. What we know about how people consume content today mm -hmm. may have nothing to do with how people are going to consume content tomorrow. I mean, you know, I grew up in a world where you read the newspaper from front to back. And it was sort of your briefing, and you came into the world stronger for having every day, for having read the newspaper from front to back, briefed on what mattered. Mm. And today, you might wake up in the morning, grab your cell phone, look at your Twitter feed, which, by the way, causes your attention span instantly to atrophy to 140 characters, <laughs> and then start linking through to articles. And you're not reading comprehensively in the same way you did before, mm. but you may be reading much deeper on the things you care about. Yes. And so it's fundamentally transforming how people engage with information. And I'm not pessimistic about that. I'm interested in it. I want to see how it plays out. But I'm quite confident that you know, we live in a society full of incredibly smart, capable people. And the generation that you know, created Facebook or Twitter or Snapchat or Instagram or Line or WhatsApp is quite capable of figuring out how to look after its information interests we, the media and journalism world, need to figure out what our place in that and how we work and work with and connect to those people is. It's true. Although I think what's exciting is everyone is still trying to figure it out right now. And I just wonder if anytime soon it's going to get to a place where we figured it out and it's going to stay that way for quite a while. I think the, or you think those the days are idea over. that you will figure everything out and it will stay that way is finished. And, you know, I think that's a healthy thing. I think you know, the constant change in, some, in an abstract, more abstract way of thinking about it is our society doing that healthy practice of rethinking its, rethinking its own behavior mm -hmm. and trying to optimize and trying to figure out what is, the, what is it that the society needs and wants and how is it that people want to engage with information. And we, the content producers or journalists, we, we play a role in that. Mm. But we're not the only people who play a role in that anymore. Where do you think journalism is headed? I think journalism is changing rapidly. But I am quite confident that the fundamental principles of journalism that matter to me and to the folks who put out Rappler are absolutely um, critical mm. to the survival of a certain kind of journalism. You know independence, fairness, a uh, quest for the truth as nearly as it can be ascertained, um, accountability of the powerful, um, transparency of issues that need to be made transparent, a civic, a sense of civic responsibility. These things are, are critical elements of journalism. And the mix, they don't all come from one place. They may not all happen at the same time. But the mix of values that together comprise good journalism is as relevant, as important, as central to the success of any journalism outfit today, whatever medium, however they convey that content, as it ever has been. Great. Thank you so much for speaking with us, Marcus. My pleasure. I was just speaking with Marcus Broccoli of North Face Media, who talked to us about their investment in Rappler and what that means for both companies. I'm Natasha Gutierrez. Thank you for, st thank you for stopping by.